And we are live. Sas, dale gas. This is RPT season numero 6, episode number 64. It is June 23rd, our year of the Lord, 2021. Yeah. I am Chingo Bling, aka Pedro Herrera, because I need to like start branding my uh, my government name. Oh, shit. <laughs> I don't know if I should go by Pete and <laughs> make yeah, it easier. Most people. people say Pete, yeah. Sepa la madre. Well, you know, I went by Pete in school. And we have producer Rob Sass. What's up, everybody? New the, angle. New new angle for you. The man that makes it all happen. He's Thank the you. glue to the RPT, man. Making sure that the patrons are taken care of. If you have not joined our Patreon, it is growing. Thank you guys so much. You guys are going to be the reason that soon we're going to have a mini split ac unit back here it won't be no fan noise in the episodes we ain't gonna be sweating rob ain't gonna be glistening bruh it's rough yeah because uh you know this is the garage studios broadcasting live from the humidity capital of the world that's right houston texas you ever wonder if people like mark Marin and other people that started in their garages fighter and the kid were sweating balls like this i don't they you, don't, have to, you gotta believe right this kind of like but they don't dues. live in houston though yeah this is a uh, paying dues yeah you're right that's california i mean hey disney started in the garage so did apple that's my excuse. That's what I tell myself every day, bro. I like that. That's a good point. That's how I hype myself up, homie. I like it. That's how I stay motivated, big doc. I'm going to take that and run with it. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to wake up every day like it's, we all started in the garage. Hell yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Shit. You know what I'm saying? Cold showers early in the morning. That's right. Get that. Uh, get the <laughs> hormones going. But from the garage to the road, Chingo. That's right, man. We'll be talking about hormones on the other episode, man. <laughs> Chingo Chats. However, this is RPT, and if you have not joined the Tamal Intelligence Agency, now is the time to take action and hop on patreon.com forward slash red pill tamales because we're living in a day and age where some very very important information is not getting to you because the mainstream media purposely keeps it in a vacuum false narratives galore psyops on psyops how sam Tripoli likes to say hit us up man patreon.com forward slash red pill tamales and sign up for the price of a cup of coffee sas we appreciate you thank you so much uh i am a stand-up comedian believe it or not back on the road i know some people be like man chingo just want to run for office chingo want to be governor someday no that sounds very boring too many skeletons in your closet too yeah they're they gonna dig up some shit uh you know chingo one time man he uh you know, he snorted Lucas <laughs> off a girl's uh, breast in, in Del Rio, Texas or some shit. Crumbled up some mazapan on top of it. Yeah, he put some mazapan in a music video, chopped that up. Uh, we don't want that coming out. Freedom of Speech Tour. I am headed to California, Ontario, California, baby, July 14th. Then we hit Oxnard, the 805. That is July 15th. And then back to back. Waco, Texas, July 16th. Midland, Texas, July 17th. Nino America hit me up. Oh. He said, bro, we're going to sell out this show. He says, we already bought, we already reserved a whole VIP table. That ass. He said, Patriots going to be out there deep. <laughs> I got roots in West Texas, man. I've been going out there. I got a lot of friends and homies, so uh, do not get sold out. August 11th, Irvine, California. August 18th, San Jose. August 27th through the 29th, Denver, finally. El Paso, what it do? September 9th through the 11th. Brea, California, September 15th. Addison, Texas, October 7th through the 10th. San Antonio, October 14th through the 16th. And then home, H-Town, November 5th through the 7th. And we're, we're, dude, we're working on Salt Lake. We're working on Phoenix. We're working on Vegas. Right. So everybody stay tuned. Hit it up, chingobling.com. So we're looking for a big second half of the year is what you're saying hopefully man you know i get to go back to work uh we have a baby due august 6th and um i'm gonna be working already as you heard in the dates like august 11th or some yeah. crazy shit with a newborn but hey man bills gotta get paid that's right you know what i'm talking about uh since we mentioned the patreon like we do at the top of every episode if you didn't catch the chingo chat usually you know the patreon exclusives fridays and mondays there's a teaser that goes up on the public feed, Spotify, iTunes, the whole thing, Stitcher, wherever you listen to them, Podbean, whatever you like. But this week, we hadn't uh, we hadn't done one for the public since like the sixth episode, because mm -hmm. I remember you went in really deep on some good conversations on that one. We're like, you know what? Everybody needs to hear this. We did it again uh, with this past episode, 21, 21, because uh, we really went deep on health and wellness. Mm -hmm. And, you know, health is wealth, mm -hmm. depending how you look at it, right? Oh, yeah. How you frame it. And yeah. um, people... Have responded to it really well. So if you missed it and you thought it was just a teaser, it's a full hour episode. Go check it out. Yeah, go check it out. I think we're on to something. Uh, yeah. We've been teasing uh, us wanting to 
do a whole nother podcast show, like a whole nother show, man, so that the patrons can have mm-hmm. more content, more content, more content. And we think we want to talk about, you know, the health thing, man. We want it to be empowering. We want information. Uh, we want the Patreon community, you know, everyone on the app to be sharing their health hacks, yeah. right? Like, hey, check out this cauliflower pizza. Look at the numbers on this Ezekiel bread and, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, and the other one would probably be, this is just throwing it out there, like, without even having talked about it before, but, mm-hmm. like, how to how to take care of your future, you know, your future wealth. Yours, your kids, you know, what you want to do with your money. Having people like Chris Irons and people from that uh, area and make that maybe its own other programming, you know, to add to the Patreon. So the health, literally the wealth, the politics, which will never stop because it's never going to end. We're always mm-hmm. going to have stuff to talk about. I think that'll be a really good uh, mm-hmm. topic as well to cover. Or we combine them hoes and do a, a money and my muscle. Ooh, I like it. Dude, I actually, I really like that. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. I don't know. We'll make gold coins that say money and muscle. <laughs> Something. Uh, but hey, stay tuned. And like Rob said, go check out that free full hour Chingo Chats episode. Man, there's like a fucking bug on me, dog. Oh, man. The, um, the bug's uh, one of the muscles. Yeah. They, they wanted some of that size, that, that masculinity. You know what I'm saying? We got to save masculinity. But we want to talk about stuff like that. Hormones and mm-hmm. testosterone and masculinity and how to optimize. So a lot of stories today, man. Yeah, where do we start, dude? I know I've got my list of stuff, but I know you had to have consumed. I always put it at the top. Okay. What's got, on the top I got of a list. head. Yeah. I got a list. So do you recall the Lancet Scientific Journal? Yes, we've mentioned it. And you sent me an article five minutes ago that I haven't yeah, read. Yeah, I know. And it's long, too. Yeah. Uh, we were trying to watch a sermon this morning, Dr. Ed Young. And I'm sitting there like... Trying to do both? One, one ear on the sermon, one eye on, on my reading these articles. <laughs> what does Peter Danzig do again? For real. So, so the Lancet was considered a very credible scientific journal uh, for a long time. Up until recently, I think their credibility took a hit when... When all the news came out about Wuhan mm-hmm. and this thing being a, a man-made, possibly a leak, uh, a, a lab, maybe a bioweapon, maybe the CCP was involved. When all that came out, it kind of uh, put a damper on the Lancet's credibility because they had published uh, um, like a letter that was signed by like over 100 quote unquote scientists, right? Right, right? That they all got together and they're like, hey, y'all, they talking about this shit maybe didn't come from bat soup maybe it came from a lab and they got together and they were like man we look everybody sign this and say like the like the voice of god do not look into the lab leak theory Mm -hmm. do not leave it alone uh these are we're scientists follow the science and we're all in agreement and we all signed it there's no need to look into that well come to find out they had to run like a little redaction retraction. Mm. So they just published something where they're like, uh, previously we had published something and we weren't that forthcoming about the conflicts of interest of Peter Daszak, uh, leader of the, what is it, World Health? No, not the World Health. It's called a Eco Alliance. Yeah. And they're based out of New York. And he was very much involved with all the grant money and the funding that was going to gain a function research. Uh, Peter Daszak is a zoologist and he's very, very cool with the CCP. And he's also the only American who was involved when they were trying to look into the Wuhan Institute of Virology. Okay. He's, he was like down with the, with the world health organization. He was over there and was like, man, ain't nothing to see here. Look, we already done came. Y'all need to stop snooping. We told y'all it came from soup from a market. And they're like, so how'd y'all know? How'd y'all look? It's like, man, because they're my homeboys. I'm cool with all these Chinese scientists. And they said it won them. It's like, so that's how you investigate it? So anyway, I think it's kind of like, kind of groundbreaking that the Lancet has pivoted. Maybe there's too much liability involved. Oh, you got to think, yeah. Like maybe they're like trying to throw Peter Daszak under the bus. Maybe they're just like, hey, look, we can't crash and burn and lose all of our credibility right we gotta like somehow you know what i'm saying admit 
Admit something. So you sent me this uh, humanevents.com, Lab Lies, A Conflict of Interest for Peter Daszak, for Dr. Daszak. Have you read all of it yet, or you, you just... No, I skimmed that. You skimmed that. It's, it's long. Yeah, the other one the other one I want to share, I, I read that one. Though. Okay, I wanted to bring it up just so the listeners uh, will get a good idea of it, but just Google yeah. or DuckDuckGo, because I tried Googling it, it, it took a little while. Yeah, fuck Google. Uh, DuckDuckGo, Human Events, or just go to humanevents.com, Lab Lies, A Conflict of Interest for Daszak. Okay. Yeah, and Human Events is, um, I believe, like the the head person over there is Jack Posobiec. He's a uh, fluent in oh, Ma- word. Yeah, he's fluent in Mandarin. He's um, ex Navy intelligence officer. Uh, some people try to discredit him because he was one of the people early on with the PizzaGate thing. Mm. Like he jumped on the PizzaGate thing, and supposedly like they weren't trafficking kids from the basement of a pizza shop. Sure. Uh, so people like to use that. As a, to discredit uh, him? Yeah, they do that to everybody. It's like, yeah. oh, one time they tweeted, uh, uh, they retweeted a link from a website who, you know, wasn't all the way, you know, so just be aware of that. Anyway. It is, like, we all haven't done that. Like, we read something and we start reading it and we're like, oh, shit, and you hit retweet right away before you finish it, and then you're like, ah, oh, I shouldn't have retweeted that. So I've been locked out of my Twitter, right? I might need your help because uh, Rob is the uh, technical expert. <laughs> you didn't even tell me this. This is, hey, man, this is new information, okay. brother. all right, breaking news. So... I don't know what happened somehow, some way. I can't log back into that bitch. It's oh, like, God. and then I put my email and say forgot password. And they're like, nah, this ain't the email no more. And it's like, bitch, what you mean? It's the only email I got. And then, then I'm looking through my emails and it says somebody logged in via Android out of Phoenix. And Oh, no. So, yeah. So, if y'all see like weird shit getting tweeted out. I mean, they ha- I checked the other day. They haven't tweeted anything. Really? Okay. So I don't know what's going on. And Twitter is not helping me log back into my shit. Imagine that. They're not helping Chingo Bling who's talking about all this truth, all these red pills. We're going to have to roll. Bitch. Hey, we're going to roll up, homie. Hey, what's up, Doc? We're over here on Twitter headquarters, big Doc. Where's Nino at? Right? Me and Nino going to roll up there deep. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? So I'm going to check it live on the podcast now. Yeah. So so anyway, that's the story on The Lancet. That's the story on Peter Daszak. Um also, shout out to whoever put together PeterDazic.com, and they just put all his business. Like, you know, there's clips of him doing interviews for like 60 minutes or being on C-SPAN, literally saying, oh, yeah, we send money over there, and they got labs, and they do gain-of-function research, and we're juicing up these viruses, and we're trying to figure out maybe how we can, you know, see what it do, make them more contagious, and, and blah, blah, blah. So you want to hear the next uh, thing I got? Uh, on my on my list is your wait i do i do okay, remember your ahead. thought you are at chingo bling on on twitter yeah, right Yeah, at chingo bling are uh, they tweeting weird shit oh definitely what are they putting dude they, they change your avatar to iron man and it says I, iron that. man token it's all bitcoin and at chingo bling houston texas fifty three thousand followers that's your account man you got hacked <sighs> man okay they must have just start didn't they delete it on my old tweets man how do I get back in this shit? Look at that. Joined August 2008. They just took my whole shit. Now it's all fucking Bitcoin, Iron Man shit. Anyway, so that's annoying. There goes... Um, but you know what? I just felt like I wasn't getting much traction on my Twitter anyway. Mm. I felt like nobody was really even following me or uh, checking up on what the fuck I was doing. So we'll see. Maybe them bitches will buy that Twitter page off me. I don't know. They already hacked it. They have it. God damn How it. How am I going to... Now What? I got to fucking pull up to Twitter headquarters? Yeah, pretty much. That mighty. Okay. All right. That's the so, first task after this episode. So that's a fucking damper. Um, oh, so there was a... Check this story out, y'all. And I'm trying to figure out where we can get more info. If it's... Uh, oh, it's on revolver.news, I, okay. be- I believe. So the story is there was a top Chinese, you know, CCP spy and he defected china uh, i forget what month he came over to america right ah uh, yeah he I was like this. laying low for a little bit mm-hmm. and then he just like went off grid and he went to meet up with the uh uh department of intelligence agency or something some shit called the dia and he didn't want to go to the fbi because we already saw how they treat chinese defectors and mm-hmm. they just they just treat them like they're double agents and ignore them so th- this is huge, y'all. This is huge. A Chinese spy came to the U.S. and was like, hey, man, I'm not going back over there. He brought two terabytes. Any of all, all my nerds out there, y'all know how big a fucking terabyte is. It's a lot. A terabyte. I mean, supposedly, 
And I and I hope this is real. I hope like he's not a double agent. He's not feeding misinformation or nothing like that. But because they got to look into that. Two ter two whole terabytes. And and I, we got to find homeboy's name because it's like a, a Chinese name. It's hard to pronounce. Yeah. Supposedly on these computers or whatever these hard drives, there's information that about the El virus being, I guess, a bio weapon, and all kinds of dirt on how many politicians are have received bribes and are basically bought and paid for by the CCP. All todo the way, todo todo everything about what media outlets they control, um, their entire little game plan on how they're just subverting some shit is it a uh, dong was that his name yes okay S A way so via the daily beast mystery of top chinese spy masters rumored defection gets even weirder so i don't know man we gotta see we gotta fact check this one yeah i don't know it's it's weird so supposedly he was like a top chinese spy look how this starts though okay where is dong jingwei Rumors that China's top counterintelligence official had defected to the U.S. last February reached fever pitch over the weekend, propelled largely by unfounded reports in anti-communist and pro-Trump circles that Dong had brought with him evidence that the COVID-19 pandemic had originated in a leak from a virology lab in Wuhan, not from an animal source. This is from the Daily Beast. They yeah. lean left, right? Yeah, they lean a little bit more, I would say, left, center left, maybe. So it's like, okay, I would expect, ver you know, verbiage like that. And, and look what it says. The Wuhan lab leak theory has not been proven. The vast majority of researchers believe the virus leapt from an infected animal to a person, probably via Wuhan's wet market. Yeah, right. This is already bullshit because yeah. even in the John Stewart when Stephen Colbert uh, little sit down, it's the... Stephen Colbert says, well, you know, there's there's bats. There's bats in Wuhan, uh, John. Bullshit. Bullshit. Uh, those types of horn shoe, horseshoe bats or whatever, they come from the Hunan province, like a fucking thousand miles away, like hella far. They, they came from the Hunan province. And there's a doctor that goes by the bat lady. Her crazy ass, she would go in there and collect these samples to find these viruses and she had funding. She thanked Fauci publicly. Like, I want to thank Dr. Fauci for the funding so I can continue to be the bat lady and continue to study these coronaviruses. She would bring them viruses to the Wuhan Institute of Virology. And uh, now that we're on the subject of John Stewart, I heard an interesting take. And it was the people from uh, No Agenda. Okay. Very interesting take. They said that because homeboy, he worked with John Stewart back in the MTV days. Uh, what's his name? Curry, Adam Curry. Adam Curry. So he basically his theory was that John Stewart is an operative of the Democratic Party, and that he only surfaces when it's something really, really important, like raising money for the nine eleven firemen who were getting shafted, right. didn't get that money, and basically stuff like that. He said he wasn't promoting anything. He didn't have a book. He didn't have a project. He wasn't fundraising. He wasn't promoting a new show, a network. He just went on there to supposedly tell his little jokes. And and he's, his, his uh, theory is that he's softening the blow so that as they pivot the narrative about the lab leak theory, I guess uh, normies can can already have the seed in their head. God, I fucking love Adam Curry. It That's was a it great was, take. Yeah, it was a very <clears throat> interesting take for sure. It, this Daily Beast article goes on to say, uh, quote, the CCP has never admitted any defection of its MSS officers. Dr. Han Liancho, a former Chinese foreign military, our ministry official who defected in 1989, uh, told Spy Talk in a small, I don't know, I guess, I mean, they're just def denying the defection of these recent, spy, quote unquote, spies. I mean, duh. Yeah. If, you, if you had one of your <clears throat> top spies leave your country, go to your enemy's country with two terabytes of fucking chisme, information where Hunter Biden's on that bitch. Everybody's on that bitch. Um, so. Fuck, what was I going to say? Oh, I think it was, I was reading, when I was reading that as well, mm -hmm. there was like, a, I don't know if it was that guy or someone else saying how many people, how many young spies are coming out of China. I think it was like one in three or like, do you know, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, it, I think, I don't know if it was uh, from this story, but basically like one out of three Chinese 
uh, college students yeah. are basically just feeding info back to the CCP. Right. And yeah. I mean, we're already at war. Like, we don't already know. It's weird because it's like we know these things, right? Nor- normies don't know. <clears throat> no, they don't. But a lot of us do. A lot of people do. They know what's happening, they know it's been happening. It's, it's just how do you. Fuck, this goes back into like all the red pilling that you do or no, that we do or that we consume mm-hmm. where it's like you can't ignore this anymore. Like once you hear it and then you read about it and you're like, oh, this is 100% true. Like maybe that maybe the percentage is a little different. Maybe it's not, you know, 60%. Maybe it's 40%. But nonetheless, it is really happening and people will still to this day deny that it's ever happened. So say his name one more time so that... Uh, Dong? Yeah. I think it's his first name. He just kept saying Dong, which is pretty funny. Señor Dong? Señor Dong. Esa, hey, wait. Al CCP, le van a dejar la riata. They're going to take the CCP to Riata Ranch. Riata Ranch. Uh, Dong Jinwi. Sas. Ahí está. Ándale, cabrón. Ya le salió el pinche Dong. <laughs> el Dong Mamalong. <laughs> Captain Dong. Yes, sir. You ever watch Spaceballs? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Bro. I love that movie. Spaceballs is the best yes. fucking movie ever. Oh, fucking man. Fantastic, man. It's amazing. Dude arguably a lot of my stupid ass humor yeah especially like a, like a lot of my early mixtapes when it was like beavis and butthead style fart jokes like like that's why so many of my fans were in eighth grade and fucking high school right. and shit when i was when i was like 21 putting out mixtapes it was like these little youngsters citing reciting my skits and my lyrics and and my cd covers and finding all the easter eggs and knowing, <laughs> knowing all the characters and and everything space balls bro <sighs> when's the last time you saw it i want to right. watch it now okay just this is my, my my little anecdote about space balls all right so i grew up with two older sisters right mm-hmm. way older so they were like 13 years old they are 13 years older and 10 years older and there came a, an age where maybe they're 18 and 21 and i'm 10 right so mm-hmm. i'm stuck at home bored so i'm you know uh consuming their media mm-hmm. so they might leave like ferris bueller's day off on vhs Classic. space balls on vhs they might have like a beastie boys cassette or uh ll cool j cassette so that helped feed like all that 80s type of content mm-hmm. but space balls is amazing if y'all have not seen it it may hit different now that we're fucking older sure but at the time it was like satire and parody all mixed in where they would break the fourth wall like they'd be in the scene and they'd fucking like look at the camera and say some shit or we should do that on chingo chats like break down some of those old 80s movies that really kind of influence your early work like ferris bueller's day off that's one of my favorite movies ever bueller bueller yeah see because I, I mean that's obviously not my time but i saw some of those in the mid to late 90s i just don't remember what was like what was considered a i don't know a, a hit or a, a seminal piece of, of art back then oh, other than maybe like those two off the top of my head. I don't know. Yeah, those are great. And John Hughes, he either like directed, wrote, or produced a lot of these classics like, um, if, you know, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. He did Planes, Trains, Automobiles, Home Alone, uh, 16 Candles. Oh, uh, 16 Candles. Yeah. Um, Breakfast Club. Was that one? Yeah, Breakfast Club. So a lot of them took place in Chicago, which we can, um, we're going to pivot into Chicago in a minute. Yeah. But anyway... That's more of a chingo chats. Type who, of who's the actor that, that was in Spaceballs that got hit on in the New York streets not too long ago? Rick Moranis. Rick Moranis. Poor Rick Moranis, man. Little Rick Moranis. Just go highs and just you know living his best life. Yeah, he, you know, he, he don't learned, want no attention. He learned firsthand New York ain't the same. Mocos <laughs> got This De Blasio's New York now, bitch. Bye, schoolero. Fuck. You know, people playing the knockout game out there. So, um, all right, check this out, bro. All right more groundbreaking information give it to me a lot of stories today all right so you guys remember the event on 1 6 yeah. right january 6 um it has been branded and marketed by democrats as you know as basically proof that white man bad uh trump supporters are insurrectionists uh domestic terrorism and and white supremacy is our number one fucking threaten america next to global warming um this event on one six some people would argue that the vast majority of the people were just there to protest you know what the i guess the certification of the elections um many people were just kind of like tourists that wandered in and just basically didn't really damage much 
And then there was another group of people, a small group of people who went in dressed in all black, breaking windows. Um, you know, obviously the police didn't have their riot gear. They weren't even fucking stepping in. Here's where it gets juicy. All right. So the story broke on, uh, is it revolver.news? I think it was revolver.news, a, a gentleman named Darren uh, Beatty, B E A, like T T I E or some shit. So y'all can look up his interviews. But the story is this. All right. And then Tucker Carlson ran with it too. So the feds, the ABC boys, you know, the FBI, mm-hmm. either A, it was a huge intelligence failure where they weren't monitoring these militia groups enough and and um, they weren't really doing their job to thwart, you know what I'm saying, what these people were trying to do. So either A, y'all fucked up and didn't do y'all's job. Or B, y'all did infiltrate the, a lot of these militia groups and y'all instigated and y'all made sure it would escalate. Like y'all were out there telling people, like y'all were all up in the meetings like basically these were double eight like not double agents these were um informants snitches provocateurs and, yeah and feds basically mm. the feds were involved making sure they were going to get their psyop making sure you know windows are going to be broken making sure um it was going to look excellent for them on camera the psyop and making sure that the cops were going to stand down basically an inside fucking job and some of the arguments they used is is basically um what's the motherfucker argument uh one of the arguments is that a lot of the people that were indicted as Mm co-conspirators they really weren't indicted like they were just kind of like uh hey uh we caught a bunch of guys we have you know we, we caught a bunch of guys but half of them don't have court dates half of them aren't going to jail basically they're snitches they're involved they're they're basically feds they're involved and um, it goes a little bit deeper than that. They also give proof of they just go back. Even remember the plot to kidnap the governor of Michigan when it was supposedly a, supposedly a, a militia out there wanted to um, storm the Michigan Capitol and something about blowing up a bridge and having like a fake pizza delivery person kidnap the uh, governor because she was like a tyrannical bitch, as they would say. Oh, Governor Whitmer. Yeah. Yeah. So those were feds. Like half of the dudes in the militia, basically, había unos malitos, unos tontitos, that they kind of like talked them into like, yeah, dude, we got to do this, bro. You're going to blow up the bridge. You're going to fucking, um, you're going to play the pizza delivery boy. They coerced them, They basically? just, yeah, just manipulated and coerced. And they didn't know that half of them were feds. Like it was the FBI doing a dry run on how we can storm a capital, have uh, co-conspirators that aren't going to get indicted, and they just give, like, um, example after example after example. Even the even the first time they tried to blow up the World Trade, you were probably a baby, yeah. but the World Trade Center, the first time they tried to blow it up through the parking garage, it was a Fed helping make the bomb it's all in the article. You just go to revolver.news. There's like multiple stories. Um, yeah, this one's from today, just 13 hours yeah, ago. Yeah, so this is the follow-up Okay. that also has a link to the original story. Mm. And that lady, Amy Klobuchar, mm-hmm. the Democrat, who was uh, one of the 35 people running for president one time mm-hmm. with the Democrats, she even questioned um, FBI Director Christopher Wray. Uh, she even questioned him, but she asked the question in a way to where he was able to weasel his way around it where it was like it was basically the way she asked him was like um it was like did y'all did y'all have prior knowledge or something she didn't say where did y'all infiltrate these militia groups right and were y'all the ones egging them on and helping them and did y'all do a dry run <laughs> oh and the fbi director that was involved overseeing michigan at the time he got a a promotion in between the time that the michigan plot and the time that the one the event of january 6th yeah he got a promotion he got moved to dc in that interim so between him being involved with the with the michigan plot to kidnap the governor and 
the fucking quote unquote insurrection, the deadliest, saddest day since the Civil War, according to fucking AOC and Biden. Motherfucker got a a a, a promotion, bro. And he got moved to DC, and something's fishy. Come yeah, on now. A couple days ago, uh, this was trending. Uh, somebody, Arthur Arthur Nix. I don't know. Oh. It's in this article. It says, uh, uh, "Looks like Twitter and the FBI are big mad at uh, Darren J. Beatty. Yeah. That's who you're talking about, yeah, right? Darren Beatty, yep. Uh, and Tucker Carlson. The amount of is it cope in this clarification is palatable. Uh, federal law does not permit cooperating witnesses or informants to be charged with conspiracy despite a baseless suggestion by Tucker Carlson that some co- cons- co-conspirators of the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol were not charged because they were undercover FBI agents. There you go. Uh, For them to acknowledge that in a tweet, you know, like that's like, how do we cover our ass kind of thing? Yeah, man, Tucker Carlson out there doing God's work, which is <laughs> in a sense, right? But and let's kind of maybe expand on that because it's weird what's going on with Fox and some of these local news stations where anchors and people are coming out talking about they're they're trying to trying to force different narratives and silence you know journalists. Have you been keeping up with the Project Veritas stuff? Um, I think the story of the local weather girl it kind of fell flat. It was like, so you the weather girl and 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 you talking about your bosses don't let you do like so so i guess bring me up to speed well you're talking about the ivory hacker yeah so she was one and then yesterday there was one did you see the one from yesterday where no. the lady is in the middle of her broadcast and she in the middle in the middle of it smooth as butter what she, she goes from tomorrow's gonna be a high of 98 and, and fake news yeah and speaking of something segues right into it and then back the outro is like the rest of her segment Dude, so what'd she say in the middle uh it was very similar to what ivory said about uh she was gonna she sit down with uh uh, Project Veritas to talk about X, Y, and Z. I forgot what it was. And it sounded a little bit even more like, uh, you know, what's ominous, I guess, than mm. what Ivory's did. But Ivory, was she was on Tim Pool's podcast. Yeah. And I didn't catch that episode yet. But in, in the clip that I saw, she was talking about how, in particular, she was covering COVID and covering uh, one of the, the local doctor, remember, the the one that was deemed, you know, cuckoo for... Oh, the the Nigerian doctor yes, from here, from r- East. Right. That was pushing hydroxychloroquine. Yes, and she and some other people she had talked to, and when she basically, you know, went back to talk about what the responses were from those doctors, they were like, no, nah, we ain't, we're not airing that kind of thing. Uh, so that, had, that gave it a lot more credit when I started hearing that. What market was this reporter from? Right here. She's also from Houston? Oh, no, that one. Sorry, that one's from another one. But Ivory was the one talking about yeah, the COVID yeah, stuff yeah, as well. Yeah, Ivory, yeah. Yeah, man. All this affects your life. Everybody listening right now. Yeah. Um, honestly, man, I was very naive prior to 2020 mm-hmm. in terms of, you know, when Trump used to say fake news and shit like that, and yeah. the, the journalists are the enemy of the people. When that first started, you mean? Uh, when he first started well, saying yeah, that? when Trump first got in and he was trying to wake us up and warn us about yeah. the news is fake. And then when Scott Adams really started to frame it in a way that like, well, think about how the news works. Think about how who decides what will be priority uh, um, to get airtime. Like yeah. who, who's 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 in charge of saying, are we going to talk about the puppy adoption drive we're doing on the South side from four to six, or are we going to talk about the brown on brown crime happening in this neighborhood? Or are we going to talk about whatever? Yeah. So different stories get different priority. Some things just get hidden. How do things get framed? Like, remember the picture of the, I think Syrian immigrant in Europe who like washed as a little boy. He, he like drowned and shit. From you know, a while back, you talked yeah, about it's yeah. like, uh, it. It's like two years ago, I think, no, right? No, or a no, year no, ago? No, no, no. no oh, no. then I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, this... Mike Cernovich put it on his uh, documentary called Hoax. But anyway, a lot of y'all listening are... It's iconic, this photo okay. of this little Syrian migrant boy that washed up and drowned. And at the time, this is probably at least six six years ago, right? Because it was during... Europe's migrant crisis, mm. where England's politics shifted soon thereafter. Their sovereignty went, you know, went down. Their borders got eroded from the amount of um, influx of migrants coming in. So basically, the way here's my point: the way this image was framed, it was like to make you feel guilty 
of wanting to be populist nationalist, of wanting mm. to be England first, of wanting to do Brexit, of not wanting to be down with the European Union. That image of the drowned migrant Syrian boy was to make you feel guilty. It was to touch the emotions. However, a lot of context was left out. Mm. How did the boy get there? Was he placed there? Um, his father was basically a human smuggler and was involved with many human smugglers. And yes, it was unfortunate that the boy drowned. However, it was he was used. That image was front page everywhere. It was like illustrated, drawn. Uh, they made fucking political comics about it. Yeah. So it was basically weaponized for an agenda for a leftist globalist agenda and it affected england's politics and uh their their sovereignty damn that's wild yeah it, I, it I gets like deep that, homeboy it does it gets deep homeboy shout out Sam <laughs> i feel like that happened not too long ago it might have been salvadorian or an ecuadorian or uh son i think it was a father and a son or the same thing where we saw you know that same image i remember seeing like a drawing of it i don't remember seeing the picture of that one mm -hmm. but I'm sure the media was like, fuck, place them better yeah. so that we could be able to use it better. That's dark, man. Like some hoes. Like All some right, hoes. so here's here's the last one on my list. All right. Um, before we move on to the next or the rest of the list. Uh, Nino America, mm -hmm. he posted a video of a gentleman, a Cuban, Cuban dude that was in his house, basically looked like live stream. And the caption said he wrote a diss rap talking about the... Um, communist regime in cuba and basically he was about to get his door kicked in and he was live streaming and that's what exactly what happened he's like hey, you know what i'm saying Damn. and then soon thereafter doo -doo -doo -doo, poof, then motherfuckers barge in tackle them and then the, the feed gets cut right and the reason i want to bring it up is because a lot of times as i talk about freedom of speech you know freedom of speech tour People are like, Chingo, shut the fuck up. Big tech doesn't want to take away your freedom of speech. Nobody's coming for your freedom of speech. You're just a wacko right-wing conspiracy theorist. You just want to be Alex Jones. Just run for politics already because we know that's what you want to do. We know you want to be down with white people. That's why you're dropping a country song. Uh, uh, we know that your tax bracket, this, that, and a fucking third. The reason I go so hard about this freedom of speech stuff is because I want people to really cherish mm -hmm. the idea of you being able to express yourself critique the government and say what the fuck you want to say right and just be very weary of people trying to erode the freedom of speech and and undermine the constitution yeah like if you want to be that bmx rider that uh did you see that man i heard about it that i guess it would be he now um his goal is to make it to was it X Games or Olympics so that he could stand on the podium and burn an American flag? So this particular athlete is a is what trans? Yeah, it's a trans. Okay, so it's a dude who says he's gonna. Is it a dude that's gonna compete? A biological male that's gonna compete against women? I think it was. <clears throat> it's a woman, biological woman who's gonna compete against men. I think it's a man who's bio, who's a bio, biological man who's oh, a trans woman. And they're hoping to make it to the Olympics. Yeah. So that they can stand on the podium and burn our beautiful flag. Yes. So basically, this person hates America. And I'd argue that somewhere along the way, they were indoctrinated, maybe at these indoctrination camps we call public schools. <laughs> um, maybe they were indoctrinated along the way to hate America. Maybe they were taught a little bit of CRT. And they've been brainwashed because our beautiful country is on top our beautiful country is the shit and the only way to defeat us is to make us turn against her and hate america from within from within these little indoctrination camps and this critical race theory stuff a lot of the moms are getting fired up they're going up to these uh school boards um there was a gentleman with his daughter that went viral recently his name is uh, like cory yeshua and and he that video made the rounds. It was a young black father with the daughter, cute little daughter. And there he's basically saying, Don't I teach you to work hard so you can accomplish what you want? Oh, I saw that. That was like a couple weeks ago. Yeah. And shout out to all the parents out there that are waking up to this because CRT, 
comes in different forms, different names. They they call it different things, and they're sneaking in, sneaking it into the curriculum, because these leftist Marxist extremists have taken over almost every institution in our country. Yeah. So here we are, transgender BMX rider for Team USA. Oh, this person's already on Team USA. Reportedly vowed to burn U.S. flag on metal podium. Yeah. So I mean. We can all go and re- read the article. And sh- the New York Post uh, posted this. Yeah. So. Well, that's fucking amazing. That's great that we have so <laughs> many freedoms. This country. And that's why I brought it up. Yeah. Yeah. Th- dude, thank you. This country has done more to free more people uh, escaping persecution, escaping socialism, communism, uh, political persecution, religious persecution. This country has done more to provide opportunities for people, immigrants of all walks of life, all colors. You know what I mean? Because the narrative is Michelle Obama is is oppressed. Oprah Winfrey is oppressed. Um, white supremacy is our number one fucking enemy next to global warming. And it's a bunch of bullshit. So I would advise you to really look into what the fuck are they teaching your kids? Because sometimes kids come home and they're like, Daddy, I hate America. Or, Daddy, I don't trust a lot of white people. And it's like, where are you getting this from? At school? Yeah, that shit won't, that shit won't fly. I don't think it'll ever come to our, our house just because of where our kids are lucky, lucky enough to go to school. But um, it could happen anywhere. I mean, it's, it's spreading slowly throughout Look the country. It. And I, Obama was doing an interview with somebody, some other rich. Did you see it? I, I, I didn't put it on the list. I didn't watch it. But I, he he was defending fucking CRT. Yeah, exactly. Bitch ass so I just read the caption, and again, guilty of what a lot of us do. Just read it, and you're like, okay, this is clickbaity, but it wasn't clickbaity enough for me to read it because the gist of it was that here you have two black, like two multi million dollar, you know, rich black individuals talking about how America's racist and it suppresses and blah blah blah. I'm like, man, that's crazy. Yeah, like Don Lemon blows your mind. Like Don Lemon, man, this is multi millionaire. He gets paid millions of dollars to be the host of a failing show, a show that's failing. Married to a white man. He don't live in the projects. Don Lemon don't stay in the hood. No. He's not on Section 8. He, he lives in the fucking rich-ass part of New York, multi-million dollar home, and he gets on TV every day and tells you how America's racist and how shit ain't fair for black people. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Who's the other failing show on that network that I can't think of? Mr. Estrogen? Uh, the- Brian Seltzer. Yeah. Sel- Seltzer, Steltzer, whatever. He, there was a compilation somebody sent to me. Sorry, I can't give you credit. I forgot the video and your name. But it was, it was uh, him. And it starts off with, uh, you know, we can't ignore it anymore. The mental decline is just inevitable. And at first, like, you think, like, what's he talking about? Is he really, is this really, is this new? Is this for, like, Biden? But they, like, mashed together videos of Biden, like, the one falling, forgetting where he's at, like, yes. up in the air. But it's, it was really from two years ago when he was talking about Trump. Yep. The one time with the cup of water and shit. <laughs> oh, dude, it was so oh, funny. Man. You got me good, whoever that was. I, I thought s- it was legit. I saw that. And we're going to try to find it and post it on the What Did He Said Instagram yeah. page. And it was amazing because... The stuff that Brian Seltzer is saying, it's like, he, something's very wrong with yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It can, it can no longer be ignored. <laughs> yes. This is before Biden, you know, well, I guess was, was the, nominee. the contender, the yeah. nominee, and the president, right? Everything he's saying could be said about Biden. But like legit, though. Legit, legit. But they're not saying it. Instead, they said it about Trump. They're like, it can no longer be hidden. Uh, many experts are concerned over the cognitive, blah, 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 blah. And like, is he all there? Is he fit to be president? <laughs> is this and that? You know, I, I wonder if, and I, this is just what I think, that after those kind of segments, you know, they're off there, maybe they're done. He just like takes off his lapel and he's like, <laughs> can you believe I said that? I killed that shit. Yeah, and he goes and he puts his purse on. She's that video where like he's getting talked to by a, a fucking Veritas, I think, journalist. And he legit, it's not, it's not a Sancho satchel. Uh-huh. It's not a fanny pack. It's yeah. a legit purse. And it reminds me of the Seinfeld episode where he's like carrying this thing. He's like, it's European. It's a satchel, you know? Like he does look legit like a purse. Oh, I need to watch that Seinfeld episode. Yeah, it's funny. Very funny. Okay. So yeah, man. Um, I, I, as we transition into the next, yeah, I just want to shout out some of the newest, newest patrons. Whip them out, man. Angelica Padron just joined a minute ago. Uh, Johnny, he didn't put his last name, three hours ago. Shout out to Lola Mars. 
um let's see view recent activity um laura i didn't put her last name laura shout out to laura jesus nava uh, just joined thursday mp reynolds just joined wednesday sara solis uh gilberto cano victor paya damn payare payares a la madre <laughs> edgar ballesteros we might be related because i um that's like my mom's my grandmother's maiden name anyway Orale. Anyway, we're familia, Edgar. Orale, ka. Uh, Ray Rodriguez, Seth Garcia, Chelsea McMahon, Victor Cornejo, Monica Rivera. Shout out to all the patrons. Patreon.com forward slash Red Pill Tamales. We will soon have a mini split AC unit in this bitch. Thanks to you guys. Hell yeah. We got to do this super early so it doesn't get too hot. By the time Marisol gets in here and her and I are like noon, one o'clock. Sweat. It's We're sweating. Yeah. We're st- straight so up sweating. Shout out to the patrons. Uh, Let's see what you got here on the list. Buckhead residents want to break away from Atlanta. Did you hear about this? Yes. Okay, so if not, if I'm not mistaken, that's the place you were talking about that really popular mall is in, right? Yeah, Lennox Mall. Yeah. So, yeah, Buckhead, in my opinion, is like the River Oaks of Atlanta. Okay, that's a great comparison from what I was reading. Which so. is like the Beverly Hills or, you know, the rich part. Yeah, and from what I remember reading, that just I don't know how big the town is or the area, but they account for like a fourth of tax revenue for the entire state so they the whole state yeah basically man that's where all the money is they're still considered a part of atlanta so when they need help and they need to call 911 they need to wait on atlanta pd they want to break away because they want to have their own police force right because if you ask me man it's not fair that they're paying all them taxes and they're getting murdered like there's there's um the security guard in front of Cheesecake Factory at the Lennox Mall, two little dudes pop pop shot him. Like there's always some shit going down at Lennox Mall. It's ratchet. Yeah, it is, man. It's ratchet. Somebody gonna be twerking, somebody's fighting, and it's always some shit going down. And it's gotten to the point, yeah, this is a good clip. It's gotten to the point where like a white man is just jogging in his area. Somebody, we don't have to name what color they were. You know, just use your imagination. Just runs up and just basically shoots the guy yeah. for being white and being outside mm-hmm. in Buckhead. And now that motherfucker got to call 911 and shit like, bitch, I'm over here on this street. Hurry up. And they're like, uh, what are you doing? He's like, I, I was jogging. And it, what happened? I'm shot. Is there excess bleeding? Uh, yes. Yes, I was. Sh- yes, I just got shot. Send somebody. And I believe the Buckhead needs to. And, and check this out before, before we play the clip. Mm-hmm. The way CNN covers this story, these types of stories, they yeah. always say, um, predominantly white buckhead, predominantly white buckhead, white rich buckhead, rich buckhead, white people buckhead want to, and they just try to, they try to frame it as something like they're doing something wrong. Like they want to just leave Atlanta. And this is the part of the clip actually that I had pulled up. So uh, Tucker Carlson, and I like bringing up stuff from, you know, Daily Beast or CNN, all these left leaning uh, publications so that if people find these clips or end up listening to the podcast, the sources are not by any means the majority Breitbart, PragerU, uh, Fox Crowder, News, Fox yeah. News. It's usually we're trying to go the other direction. They just, this one's the only one I happen to find that had that CNN clip within it. So if you want to go find, what is it? Uh, Tucker CNN hates this idea. YouTube the video, it's like 11 minutes long, but here's a, a portion of it. So why wouldn't others take them seriously? Why wouldn't shootings and stabbings be the end result of that? Some people in Buckhead have had enough of this. They don't think it's gonna get better. Two bills currently in the Georgia State Legislature would allow Buckhead to leave the city of Atlanta, then run its own competent police department and resume being a safe, nice place. CNN, for one, hates this idea. CNN is headquarters in Atlanta and has been for 40 years. They know exactly what's going on in the city. They don't care. You don't like getting shot while jogging? Well, then you're a racist. (laughs) The mostly white neighborhood of Buckhead is pushing to separate from the rest of the city. CNN's Ryan Young has more from Atlanta. The Buckhead Exploratory Committee reports they've raised over a half a million dollars and is now pushing state lawmakers to push through a bill that would allow their cityhood petition to be voted on in the next election. The predominantly white neighborhood's movement is gaining traction with Republican lawmakers. They got to oh, throw that you in. you following this? Did you get the dog whistles? Mostly white, predominantly white. <laughs> got it? So if you're opposed to getting murdered outside Cheesecake Factory, you're a white supremacist. They always say that. Here's the funny thing. They don't mean it. How do we know they don't mean it? Take a look at how they live. How many CNN anchors, including the ones you just saw, have weekend homes anywhere near Section 8 housing? Let's see. 
We'll check our notes here. Red Run, zero. In fact, not one. Instead, they run to Martha's Vineyard, or they charter helicopters to fly to the Hamptons on Friday afternoon. In other words, in their spare time, they get as far away from diversity as they possibly can. Not just some of them, all of them, every one of them. That's the truest generalization ever made. A recent piece to put a finer point. Yeah. And you were spot on before I even played this clip, like a lot of what you said. Because I saw that motherfucker. Oh, okay. I saw that clip. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, <sighs> yeah, nobody that works at CNN lives in Bankhead, no. which is, you know. Buckhead. No, 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 no. I'm talking about the other one. Oh. So Buckhead is the rich part. Uh huh. Bankhead is the hood. Word for real? That's yes. what it's called? Yes. Okay. So what I'm saying is these people on CNN who are trying to paint this narrative that somehow the people of Buckhead, the rich part, um, are, are somehow wrong in wanting to separate themselves from Atlanta. They should because all that violence is starting to creep in. It's like y'all paying all them taxes. You don't want to wait on Atlanta PD. No, fuck and, no. And and the mayor, uh, uh, Keisha Bottom, uh, Mayor Keisha Bottom or whatever her name is, it's the. She also likes to push the rhetoric. Super, yeah. Uh, of basically white people bad and black people victims. Yeah. <laughs> and you can just, and it's not just Chingo saying that. You can go see her, like her responses to them wanting to do this. It's it's. Basically that, like she don't think it's a good idea, talks a lot of shit about it, um, but it makes sense when you are literally being cut down jogging on the fucking sidewalk. Yeah, man, like get your own police. You paying all them taxes, man. Y'all y'all rich, y'all got the mansions and shit, y'all got the all that nice nice businesses around y'all. And there, there's more, like really, I recommend everybody go look into that situation because there are many, many instances of like, a white couple minding their business, getting out of their car or something, and like a deranged black dude starts harassing the shit out of them yeah. and ends up hitting, like beating up on both of them. Yeah, the boyfriend and the girlfriend. In Buckhead. That's like, I'm sure they're just kind of like, yo, what the fuck? And like, then, we're in Buckhead. And then he was released like four days later. Yeah, because a lot of these Democrat-run cities are soft on crime. Yeah. they, they The district attorneys, and um, to pivot into George Soros... <laughs> supposedly george soros back in man it's about 16 years ago right where they, he had this um basically this agenda to go in and change the what is this role this position uh secretary of state or okay. some some uh, state department i forget basically helping fund and making sure that they hand pick these people that are in charge of elections in all these states. Mm. So that was one very important state step, right? Also going in in the next level, the next tier, going in and make sure you handpick like district attorneys and so on and so forth to where you're able to really pull strings and control things like elections, Senate seats, and, and this type of bullshit. Yeah. So look into it look into it puerto rican couple shot in chicago after the puerto rican day parade on saturday night did you see that video yes oof oof i don't even want to play the video i'm gonna play something else but what are your thoughts on that oh man um so the way i first saw it i didn't know it was a puerto rican day parade i just remember seeing the video of like a vehicle with like a puerto rican flag on it and like four or five black dudes yanking these two people i couldn't tell it was a couple i couldn't tell it was like a girl and a dude at first yanking this couple out of the car and then one dude close range executing them just like pop 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 and everybody just kind of scatters and my thing is who was filming this were they live streaming like did they upload it like who got a hold of this footage yeah why would you be a snitch like that you know and then I saw this clip of this uh, Puerto Rican dude on TikTok who said he's joining the Lexit movement. A Puerto Rican dude, I believe he's from Chicago, and he went viral when he did a rap of uh, Biden. It was uh, The Stan, mm -hmm. the Eminem song. Oh, yeah, yeah, Have you seen that rap? I've seen uh, clips of Where it. he's like, Dear Joe, yeah. I'm writing because you promised to... Yes, I saw the TikTok, like the minute version of it. Yeah, it's like really, really good parody. He does like the Eminem style rap. Well, anyway, him... This is what he said on his newest TikTok talking about the this shooting, right? He basically says, I am now joining the East Coast 
branch of Lexit movement. He said Latinos need to stop voting blue. He says Chicago has been run by Democrats for like since the 1920s. Uh, and he basically said, this doesn't fit the mainstream narrative. That it's not getting the coverage it deserves. And he says, Chicago is harboring domestic terrorists. He said, these people are terrorizing people. They're, you know what I mean? There's too much violence, too much fucking crime, and nobody's doing anything about it. The mainstream media is looking away because it doesn't fit their narrative. If this if these people were Trump supporters, if they were white, if they were MAGA, if they had America First stickers or Trump stickers on their car, Garen fucking teed. The mainstream media would be like, ha, 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 exhibit A. What do you know? Using all that white privilege. All that insurrection energy. So let's see what your favorite mayor had to say about it, Chingo. Oh, uh, here we go. Lightfoot. Help. And we want to go back to Chicago for tour. So, uh, <laughs> Today. So everybody be cool. We're working on it. Yeah. We shall see. Take your time. But there were others who were standing by who dragged that poor woman uh, out of the car. The individual. It was all over a fender bender. Oh. Yeah. Shout out TIA for helping us get better internet. Wow. Soon. No, that was a lot of motherfuckers. Statement. God damn it. Shout out to the TIA helping us with our Wi-Fi issues. I'm going to start hardwiring it every episode. From yeah, you got to hardwire this yeah, bitch. Every time because the Wi-Fi is no bueno. Well, those men were involved. Oh, you know what else? We Typical can call AT and pause. Any- we can call AT and T again and say, "Hey, man, this is what I wanted to do from the jump." Yeah, which was don't don't move our router to the back of the front house. Yeah, to where it's halfway to the garage. Yeah, come and wire that bitch back here. There you go. Yeah, that would be the only way to to, to do this efficiently. Get zooms in efficiently, and then game efficiently. And then. And then the front house of my baby wa- trying to watch YouTube, she's going to have to have the fucked up internet. <laughs> Sorry, Mika. In the city, but it's horrific nonetheless. Late. Ah, damn it. Fuck it. It's not even worth playing this video. She basically just said, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a tragedy and um, this, is not a, a, this is not basically a definition of what, uh, what young black males do. She, had, she added that in there. She said it's basically don't blame it on all black males. Yeah, she said this is of not course. this is not indicative of, of black, young black males. Duh. I mean, who? That's the vast majority isn't on that type of bullshit. Yeah. However, Chicago got a real fucking problem. Yeah, they really there do. is a there. I've said it before. I've tweeted it back before. It was Iron Man Bitcoin shit on my fucking Twitter. Um, that there is a nihilism. It's nihilistic. It's like people, it's godless. People got away from God. People don't believe in nothing. And there is little respect for human life. Yeah. And it's very, very apparent. Like, how else could you explain? Motherfuckers just, it's just a weekend in Chicago. Like, like for example, um, you hear about mass murder. Like 50 something people shot over a weekend. Yeah. Juneteenth weekend or whatever. And it's like people don't even bat an eye anymore. It's like, oh, that's just a weekend in Chicago. Yeah, there was a, I don't know if I put it on here. Uh, I didn't, but there was a lot of riots and a lot of crazy shit that happened at, at a Juneteenth celebration, I think. Was it Chicago also? A lot of cities. Yeah. And, and, you don't have to blame it all on Juneteenth. It, a lot of times, it's like this shit was gonna happen regardless. It was, but it was at parades. It was like Juneteenth parades, which yeah. were never really a thing, uh, if I'm not oh, mistaken, in those other states. It was in Oakland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Juneteenth is more of a Texas thing. We've been knowing about right. Juneteenth, and also Trump was trying to get Juneteenth passed as a federal holiday as part of his um uh the Platinum Plan for right. bl- for Black America. Yes. But and, uh-huh. go, uh, not to interrupt, but yeah. I don't know if we talked about it on the last episode. It wasn't an issue usually or ever until that time he was trying to do a rally in Oklahoma on the same day. You remember that? Trump? Yeah, last year. Uh-huh. So June of last year, uh-huh. you know, he's on the campaign trail. He wanted to have one of those ginormous rallies on June 19th in uh-huh. Oklahoma. And somebody on Twitter caught wind of this. And that's how it, that's how it spread outside of Texas, basically, because it was only a, a Texas thing literally from forever and then once it you know went kind of viral or whatever started trending on twitter that's when people were up in arms all over the country about it they were trying to cancel that rally on june 19th be, be, they were saying trump was uh being like mean by ha- holding a right. rally yeah. on june 19th yes although he wanted to make although he, they also made fun of him 
because Trump was saying, I made Juneteenth very famous. Nobody knew what it was. No one knew what it was. And they clowned him for that. Yeah. Because people were like, we've always known what it is over here. What are you, why are you trying to take credit for yeah. Juneteenth? However, you got to give him some credit because he wanted to make it a federal holiday as part of his half a trillion dollar platinum plan for black America. Something that Ice Cube was looking into and talking to, uh, I think, uh, his son-in-law, Jared Kushner, about some of the points he had in his plan. And has Biden, has has the Biden administration met with Ice Cube yet? Right. Yeah. Wait, wait till I get my Twitter back, y'all. <laughs> oh, fuck. Yeah, we need to do that right after this. Yeah, I don't know. Um, it's, it's just crazy, unfortunately. It became one of those politicized things. I think, great, the more days you want to celebrate for whatever, you know, progress or movement in the right direction, I think is great. It actually, it was odd that it was such a point of contention on social media between some of the, the right and left people. Yeah, a lot of a lot of conservatives, you know, said bad shit about it. And a lot of conservatives said good things about it. Yeah. But it's, it should be noted that Trump was one of the first people that wanted to make it a federal holiday. So it, at least it was a part of a half a trillion dollar platinum plan for black America. Meanwhile, Biden just does it for symbolic. Like he ain't, he ain't offered black America shit. So thanks to Trumpas. Yeah. So we <laughs> shall see if he, if, if Trump going to be back, we shall see. Spotify signs exclusive podcast deal with Alex Cooper, host of her host of Call Her Daddy, three year, sixty million dollar deal. Yeah, man. What do you think about that? I've never heard of her. Okay. How, how good is her podcast, and how many listeners does she have to get sixty million? It's a huge podcast, so it's ran. And why we ain't got sixty million, bro? We're gonna have to take it off Spotify so they can offer us one of these bag deals. You know what I'm saying? Oh, is that's that like, part of the leverage? I think that's what, well, obviously, so right? So she was never on Spotify? I guess not. That's one of the, I mean, that's what I've read. I don't know if it's true or not, but it makes sense. And I've heard other comedians talk about that. Like, let's take our shit off Spotify. It makes a lot of sense. Um, she's very attractive and uh, apparently has a really big podcast that was oh, on Barstool. Oh, you scared me. I didn't know what you were going to say. <laughs> you said very attractive and she got some big old <laughs> podcast numbers. She got some big old podcast numbers. She got numbers. some big old listeners. You know what I'm saying? But uh, I don't know. It's not my kind of fucking podcast. It's, what does she talk about? It's basically like a real... They, they call it like a sex positive podcast. It's really just dirty girls talking about dirty stories, which great. I think that's awesome. It takes all kinds of people to make this world go round. Um, funny enough, what the, one of the reasons I wanted to bring it up is because you've been sending me more of, a, of this uh, Earn Your Leisure podcast stuff, right? I don't know if you listen to them. Uh, two black dudes talk a lot about oh, okay. mar market stuff or whatever. And they kind of were analyzing or they were going to analyze this uh, on one of their new podcasts coming out. Okay. Analyze uh, Alex Cooper's deal? The, yeah, the deal. like Kind of like they did Rogan and, and what have you. And um, the most, the funniest thing about it all was in their comic section, their comment section right away was, yeah, because she's white. <sighs> That's all everybody went to immediately. She's a very attractive chick. I don't know if this picture's going to fucking come up, but um, people couldn't get away from the fact that they didn't give Joe Budden the deal he wanted, but they gave her this deal. And arguably, just Joe Budden wasn't worth it. He wasn't doing it for Spotify. It's just a business thing. It's not personal. Yeah, a lot of times, man, um, the way you got to look at these things is it doesn't really serve you to right away view it through the lens of skin color. Like a lot of times to the people that are in the know, like behind the scenes negotiating, for all we know, Joe Budden might have said some dumb ass shit in a meeting. Uh, Joe Budden might have been a little thirsty and didn't negotiate as well. Maybe Joe Budden's manager fucked up the deal. Um, maybe this chick just knew how to negotiate better. You know, she maybe she knew her value. Maybe they offered 50 million first and she was willing to walk away from it and said, bitch, I need 60. We don't know. Yeah. Stop yeah. making everything about race. Yeah, man. So this is it. Spotify clinches 60 million plus deal with Alex Cooper. Taken away from, I guess, I didn't read all the full thing or the contract or any details, but it was a, it was a Barstool exclusive. So she blew up. Her and her co-host blew up because of Barstool. And about a year ago, maybe eight months ago, her co-host and her had a falling out because they wanted more money from Barstool. They were talking about like a, like a million dollar deal. Uh -huh. And her co-host wanted more than half a million. And they got into this argument. They, they caused all kind of fake drama with Barstool. And the, the they basically kicked her to the curb. They kicked the other co-host to the curb. Fast forward eight months, she got a $60 million deal with Spotify. 
Huh. So that other chick's got to feel like that dude on American Idol that was Ryan Seacrest's partner that was like, oh, this isn't going to do anything for me. I'm going to uh, leave. Crazy, dude. 60 million. Naked man breaks into Bel Air home. This is the homeless dude that went skinny dipping, and I think he killed the pets even. He took them out of the birdcage, stomped on them. <laughs> California. Uh, In Bel Air. California. Yeah, this talk about the bank, the um, buckhead yeah. of, of LA. Um, California. California. You guys have a homelessness issue, whether you want to admit it or not. Um, like we went to Galveston for Father's Day. Yeah. And I'm, I think I made a joke. I'm like, good thing this ain't Venice Beach. <laughs> because otherwise we'd be getting harassed right now by a whole bunch of homeless dudes and i'm surprised that galveston doesn't have more a bigger homeless population so um that's very unfortunate for those pets those birds and um you got a mental illness problem you know these people breaking into shit like there's tons of cl- dude there are some instagram pages it's like gutter people of los angeles street people of los angeles i just caught wind of this yesterday and um there is some crazy images videos footage so i don't know man i don't know how bad the shit have to get for people to realize that the your your government officials in california they're not doing a job when it comes to this homelessness shit. Yeah. All of them are getting six-figure deals. They're getting six-figure salary. It's like tons of people get, making 125, 150K, 160K a year. And the problem ain't getting solved. But all that money that's supposedly getting dedicated to the problem. It's getting lost in that shuffle. They're just all getting paid. So why solve it? If you solve it. You ain't, ain't gonna have paid. a job. Exactly. And I was listening, I've been listening to a couple of uh, economists over the weekend, just episodes on the market and what you know, everything that's happening. Inflation. I've heard some good arguments for, you know, how much it's gonna go up and how much it's not gonna go up. And if you've got assets, you're good. If you don't have assets, get your shit together, kind of thing, right? Well, one of the economists he was talking about uh, another not a friend of his, but somebody that interviewed him who is a big wig at uh, C, uh, CNBC or MSNBC on the, one of the market shows who lives right across the street from somewhere in you know downtown New York, New York City, and a super expensive high rise kind of places. The hotel that's across the, the, across the street from where she lives now in these condos or whatever has been officially uh, taken over by somebody and turning it into like a homeless shelter. And she's like, I can't walk outside of my multi-million dollar condo without stepping over people. It's getting to the point where Piss and shit. in the grocery stores, they will, they, have, they will find homeless people laying inside the grocery stores. This is in New York? This is in New York. They must be soft on crime as well because um, all those Walgreens had to shut down San Francisco yeah. because they're allowed to steal up to $950 and get a fucking slap on the wrist. So Walgreens is having to shut down stores because this fucking wasteland approach. Like, who the fuck? Dude, San Francisco taxes are so high. It's a super expensive island to live on. Gentrified as fuck. You got tech um, billionaires and homeless people. Yeah. And they done fucked off the middle, the middle class, the working class. Can't afford to live there. Small business owners. You having to step over human feces and shit. So please get your shit together. Stop voting blue. Yeah, and that anchor's uh, told, told him this in confidence because, you know, she obviously can't say that because she's thinking of leaving New York. And it's like, wow, you can't say that, you know, on one of the big New York shows. I'm surprised Schultz went back. I am too. I was going to ask you about that off air, yeah. but yeah. who knows? We shall see. Entire Portland squad resigns after officer's indictment. So here's the, the right story. squad. Yeah, it was, it's basically, they didn't quit their job, but they're refusing to work uh, protests and big gatherings like this because it's, I didn't know this, but it's not a part of their job. They're volunteering to work more like volunteering to work these type of events and they're no longer doing it. And if I'm not mistaken in this article, it says that the mayor said that they were going to gather resources from other surrounding cities to cover it. And, and they're not worried about it. <laughs> okay. I All mean, right. I mean, if I was a, if I was like a globalist that wanted America to fall from within, you know, due to chaos and division, this is all going according to plan. It's like, you just make sure Antifa is funded. You make sure that you got a, they have a battery in their back and they're fucking rioting night after night after night after night after night to where you demoralize the police force. 
you they're the police are basically handcuffed they can't do their job they're slowly spinning into chaos like it, uh, all it takes is a couple more police to uh quit because they, they're being demoralized disrespected they're not getting their funding so who the fuck want to be a cop 100 percent. who wants to go uh getting riot gear night after night and fucking try to fend off these um these assholes that nothing happens to them you heard that in new york all the looters got um como se dice? they just like bust no 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 no. a whole bunch of looters it was a cover in new york post it said let them loot basically they got let go oh like, yeah, yeah like yeah. all their cases dropped drop charges dropped yeah all charges dropped of all the looters in new york yeah. so you're incentivizing there's no there's no penalties so guess what's gonna happen next time there's mass looting they're gonna be like Psh, let's do it no pasa nada we no pasa nada so check this out this is uh at the end of the list here there was an rpt listener i won't say his name but sent me an interesting uh, dm about austin uh-huh and he was listening to RBT 63, and I guess I had mentioned it where Adler was on Rogan. He's talking about the homeless people, that shooting that happened recently as well. This is what he had to say. All right, buckle in. Uh, listening to RBT 63, where Adler's saying the cops were in full strength downtown the night of the shooting. He's full of shit. My girlfriend works for APD and is in the downtown unit. She was responding to that to the shots that night. The downtown unit is one of the only ones that is fully staffed in Austin, and they had to call units off of other sectors to assist because they didn't have enough help. The defund has dismantled the DUI unit, the lake patrol unit, the horse unit downtown, among many others. They have only had one all caps academy graduate since last year. And those, uh, and are losing many officers that they can't replace in the city that gains a hundred plus people a day. The shooters were two black males from Colleen, both minors, 14 years old and 17, and they were shooting at each other. One of the two had recent gunshot wounds from an incident in Colleen. Austin American statesman refused to describe these suspects uh, because it hurt, it was a hurtful stereotype. He said, y'all keep doing what y'all are doing. The cops, uh, they want to defund so badly, literally put some of these people in their squad cars and trucks to get them to the hospital because EMS couldn't get there, couldn't get to downtown for 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, the emergency rescue task force they they have wasn't available. Right now, the only unit already gone, the only unit already gone is the DWI unit. The others are first on the chopping block when they distribute the new budget. It's wild. Can't believe it's happening in a growing city. If you guys don't see it by now, Democrat run these these leftist policies are ruining these American cities. So. This wokeness, all this stuff about you, you can't mention this and you can't say that and, you, you, you know, police are bad. That anti-police rhetoric is biting them in the ass. Let me ask you this, Rob. Yes. <clears throat> How many rich people live in Austin, you think? Just, I mean, whatever. It's a good amount, right? Oh, yeah, totally. There's a good amount of yuppies, uh, rich little college students. There's a whole bunch of rich people. You got the tech people. You got, you know a bunch of LA people, they, they turning it into like a little LA, Nashville, Portland, whatever the fuck. Mm-hmm. Right. So at what point are these rich woke motherfuckers, these leftists, at what point are they going to be like, um, I, I kind of think it's dangerous and we need to chill out with this. Like, where's the Austin PD when you need them? Yeah. And I think some of these, I mean, people, aren't necessarily living like 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 what i think it's like in maybe la maybe you know better like the surrounding areas i don't know i'm not too familiar i hear the names glendale burbank all these yeah, things yeah, yeah. in austin i would think it's kind of similar you're going to live in you know outside a little bit outside of travis county maybe b cave you know the domain area or yeah domain area uh maybe even round rock as far out i don't know that they're very hubbed maybe maybe some of them are but maybe because they're not right there they're not really caring about it right now if that makes sense you mean in the city yeah well it depends on what level of wealth you 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 talking about. So, for example, East Side Austin was it used to be the hood. It was just mm. like just black Mexican. Yeah, <clears throat> there used to be some record stores out there. Uh, we used to hit up. Um, I think I think I want to say Bryson is from the East Side, so it's it's gentrified. Mm. A lot of those houses and properties they're worth a lot of money now because they're so close to downtown and Sixth Street. So you still have like some projects. But it'll be surrounded by like Airbnbs, right. new developments, new condos, new townhomes. So 
at a certain level of wealth, yes, they're there. I mean, you got your downtown sky rise, uh, probably million dollar apartments or something. Well, because you can only build up now in Austin. You can't build out anymore. Yeah, I'm sure it's spreading out a little bit. Like you were mentioning the bee cave and these, you know, suburb, Mm -hmm. you know, hill country. You want to live by the lake and this and that. But the my whole thing on this is like a lot of people in Austin are very like artsy, woke lefties, mm-hmm. right? People like a lot of the the DJs from Peligrosa, the crew I used to be a part of up until they found out that I voted for Trump. And uh, I guess you have to be Democrat to be part of Peligrosa. Oh, Apparently, oh. right? Apparently, you got to be a Biden supporter to be a part of this um, artist collective. Oh. And I hope they heard this and I hope they watch it and I hope y'all tag them because these used to be the homies. We had a lot of good times together. But... Um, they heard Chingo Bling voted for Trump, and that just fucking, let's make fun of Chingo, let's pick on Chingo, and it's like, how, why would I want to be a part of your little crew if if everybody has to think the same? Yeah. Anyway, there will come a point where shit's getting too lefty, shit's getting too woke in Austin to the point where somebody's going to have to snap out of it and be like, um, how did we arrive here? How the fuck did we become a slum in terms of how did we become San Francisco? Like people in Austin are going to have to pump the fucking brakes on what their mayor Adler is doing. The homelessness issue is fucking out of control. You got these dangerous situations like Sixth Street is arguably one of the attractions of Austin right. where you used to be go down, you used to be able to go down there have some drinks, bar hop, go to different clubs, listen to live music. Austin's the shit. The, the heritage of Austin is keep it weird, keep it free, keep it open, the live music capital, but it's turning into fucking homelessness galore. You might be at 6th Street trying to have fun. Somebody's doing a shootout. Somebody getting knocked out. The cops can't get to you. EMS can't get to you. Is South by Southwest going to still want to be there? Right. What is the future of Austin hold if y'all don't pump the brakes and start to fucking get back on track and this woke leftist bullshit is not serving the people, is not serving the community, is adversely affecting citizens, taxpayers, business owners. I mean, they too busy ready to... Back up Antifa, like, no, deja los pobrecitos. They have First Amendment right. Que la chingada. <laughs> no, they're peaceful. They're, hey, wey, they're doing it for George Floyd, wey. Deja los. Don't say nothing. It's for George Floyd. They're here for equality, wey. Deja los. No, no. That's not what's, what's happening. Peep game. This is some fucking, we're being attacked from within. This is some globalist, leftist, extremist bullshit. Antifa's not your friend. Snap out of it. Pull your head out of your ass. And these double standards in the media is not helping anybody. They're like, a black person did a mass shooting in Austin. Shh, don't say they were black. Don't say they were hunting white people. Yeah, I know they confess that. Don't put that in print. Yeah. It's, it's going to adversely affect the black community because it's a stereotype. Well, let a white person do it and you're going to run behind that narrative. Oh, look, I told, look at white people. Yeah. Look at these crazy white people. See, that's why we need to take guns out of y'all's hands. On some fucking Beto O'Rourke shit. You know, it's crazy because my... <laughs> done for the day. What's crazy is that in a, in a city... Well, I was going to say, I always used to go to, in my early and mid-20s, Austin was like, because it's so close. Oh, it's, it's the shit. And it's cool, you it's know? It's fun. It's super fun. Go, you know, down the street I, yeah. from like Home Plate or some of these great restaurants, and then you got 6th Street and Congress and all that shit right there. It's a blast, or at least great, it was. Yeah, great musicians. Mm-hmm. Dude, I... I practically recorded all of my They Can't Deport Us All album in Austin. Mm. I was practically living in Austin. I was there for like months at a time. Oh, wow. Months and months at a time. I was literally living in Austin. I literally had a roommate, like um, my homeboy. He had a two-bedroom apartment. And he's like, hey, man, I'm getting taxed out the ass. Um, A homeboy was supposed to move in. He didn't move in. Will you rent? Will you go have some of the rent? That's your bedroom. That way, whenever you're in town, you could you could stay here. So I even had like an apartment oh, in Austin. Um, shout out to Sally and the, and the Williams family. Um, you know they helped me with this with that album. The production uh, showed me around town. I made a lot of friends. I mean, I was practically living there, and it's a shame to see where it's headed. And I really, really pray 
that the people of Austin stand up and realize that what's going on and what's happening is not in your best interest. They are ruining Austin. They're trying to Portland your Austin. I get it. It's artsy. We got to keep it weird. But don't fucking uh, don't empower criminals and crime and stop disrespecting the police. Let me put it to you like this and, and tell me what you think. When I think about it, is you have all these art like artists, right? Like keeping it weird, keeping it you know uh, interesting. Their music, art, legit artists, and whatever, right? You have a city that's starting to go up and not not that it really is, but let's just hypothetically say it's turning into Portland and it's going up in flames, right? As somebody who already more than likely doesn't have a lot. A lot of artists don't have a lot, right? They're trying to make it. They're trying to get something, get stuff, get money, get a, a leg ahead or whatever. They're too busy calling me a sellout. Go on. Sure. Uh, and, but also, they're also just witnessing and allowing that that destruction to continue in a city that's supposed to be giving them their hopefully future prosperity, right? Fruits of the labor they're putting into the city. And instead of wanting to combat that, it's let's just let them run wild. I don't understand that. Like you're already like there's not going to be anything to obtain in that city and all the let's just say all the previous you know decade of, of, of trying to struggle and make it in this artistic town will be for nothing. They're going to turn it into Antifa town. Yeah. You know, they're ruining it. They're turning it into like a little communist haven. Um, I'm not with it. I'm not for it. It's sad. And um, but, you know, there's only so much I could do. Yeah. So the people of Austin are going to have to stand up and push back against all that leftist bullshit. Get y'all's mayor out of there. Um, I don't know what y'all going to do about that homelessness issue, but um, let's not make Austin look like Mad Max. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you have not joined the Patreon, join the Tamal Intelligence Agency. Take action. Do it now. Patreon.com forward slash red pill tamales. And we hope that you're gaining value from this and perspective and, and some of the nomenclature and vocabulary of this political landscape so that you can start to peep game as to what the news is trying to you know piss on your leg tell you it's rain so that if you live in atlanta you can understand about the tax base and and buckhead and and this and that if you live in austin you can kind of get a sense of where shit is headed understand what leftist extremism can do to your city thank you guys so much thank you for listening uh very excited about chingo chats we're going to talk about testosterone, uh, masculinity, uh, uh, masculinity is under attack in America. We're going to talk about Father's Day, the role of the dad in, a, in the nuclear family. So thank you guys so much. And se cuidan y a los guachos.